Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will learn what all new features are there in the .NET 5 version. Nothing but C Sharp version 9, by the way. So let's create that project. So while creating a project, you just need to make sure like you are you have to select this .NET Core template, not the .NET Framework, because it's just uh, what they did. There is nothing called .NET Framework version in the uh, .NET 5. It's just a .NET Core. That's it. All right. So you just need to create this. Uh, uh, .NET 5 uh, project from by, by selecting the .NET Core template. So I'm just creating a console application. So I'm selecting that template and just create it. So once you create by default, it will pick whatever version is uh, the, uh, is there in the system by default. It's it's picking by default 3.1. So let me change this one. So since I have already installed the .NET 5 uh, framework. So that's why it's showing over here and just so you can also do that by clicking on this install other frameworks after that you just need to restart your visual studio and then it should be showing up for you as well all right so let me select this one and save it close all right so you can see now it's showing dotnet 5 in dotnet 5 there is a uh, something called i'll show you first let me see if your solution is running or not so you can see our solution is up and running all right, so there is a one uh, big change is that just to print this uh, hello word, we have written uh, close to 40, uh, sorry, 12 lines of code. So they have introduced something called top level coding. Okay, so what will happen? You need not to write this much code. Just uh, you can you can just work like a script. So where you start from the first line and keep writing the code. All right, so let me show you how you can do that. Create a new class, or you can use the same. But I want to use this class. That's why I'm not deleting. So let me create a new class. Let's say top code all right the class is created now i just don't want this much so what i'll do is just simply say system dot console dot right line all right so if i execute now you can see it's printing top level code all right but then now there is one more thing i have program file as well and i have having another class which i created just and name is uh, top level code cs5 it's giving by default .NET 5 it's giving preference to the class where you are having the top level code name is just a simple you can give whatever name i'll just show you let's say i copy this one and i'll just uh, remove this i'll just say Sorry, I think I didn't copy completely. Let me and change something. Let's say dot dot. All right. So now two two class we can't have it. By the way, okay. So you can have only one top late uh, top level code, which which uh, that file can count n number of files depending on the way you are coding. But at a given point of time, you should have only starting point should be one, not two. All right. So that's why it's showing the error. Uh, you can see the only you, you can see that error etc only one compilation unit can be uh, can have top level statement all right not two so what i can do i'll just comment this one because i was trying to show you like name doesn't really matter all right so what i'll do i'll just comment this one all right so that is commented now and this class is having this line now if i run it you can see that la line is printed all right so i'll just go back to the original state here also i'll just uncomment this one now if i run now we are back to where we left all right now what we can do if you want to execute or still still you want to use the same class what you can do you can just now start writing the, the way we used to write so i'll just say i want to use something called program which dot now we just need to import that name space and then okay it's not showing because that main method is not public let me make it public and since you don't have any parameters so let's delete them so now you can see our top level code is you know that lab is executing that class it's able to print that uh, the first line with you know, which is nothing but line number three and it's also printing that main method which is nothing but from program static void main class i'm sorry that method i mean 
all right so let me close this one now they have introduced something called init the second thing which i am talking about in uh, the uh, this dotnet file so let me click this one for that i just want to create a one class called let's give it a name as person class All right, so the one property is created. The second one, let's me create as a, let's say, mobile. And here I'll say. All right, so I'll just say some mobile number one, two, three, and give some name. All right, so I our object is created. Let me bring this object. So object is okay. Name we need to implement to string. I'm I'll show you why I'm doing this. You will get it. So let me put name and mobile. All right, so now it's print port. Okay, so it's printing name and the model number. All right. And this, uh, the third thing is like they have just introduced a new syntax also for creating the object. So right now what we are saying where P is equal to new person and then creating the object. There is one more thing they did is just, uh, just an, a different way of creating. Just instead of saying where you can say person and I'll create P1 and I'll here I can simply say new since it already knows the we are trying to create a person type so no need to mention again person again here you can simply say like this I mean yeah you need to just open close bracket and the same thing you can say simply now I'll just say four five six both are pretty much same you can see all right so this is second thing third thing is uh, in the dotnet file is like let's say when we created a pro uh, object called p and the name name we have assigned something called abc after creating this object uh, we want uh, like let's say we, we have a requirement like the, the pro some of the properties should not be you know changeable or more we should not allow user to modify those properties so ideally what we have to do we have to write some lot of code just to do that but in dotnet file they have introduced something called init only init type so that means you can just declare them at the time of creating the object and once that object is created after that modification is not allowed for those properties so let's see how we can achieve so first thing i'll show you right now our same object if i want to change name it's allowing i'll just say simply say a b c this time so x y z will be changed to a b c d all right let me run it you can see it's running all right i'll just go back i want this property should not be you know changed once the object is created so instead of saying set there is something called init they have introduced so init saying like it can be only uh, i mean like assigned at the time of creating the object after that no modification all right so now if you see it started giving error and it's saying if you read init only property can be assigned in an object unless after that, that uh, it's not allowed 
all right so this is uh, another feature i'll just comment it now one more thing over here just to achieve this we have written this much code so they are saying why to write that uh, this much you just simply use a second thing something called they have introduced record type so in record type what they are saying whatever properties which you want those should not be modified once you create an object you just declare them like this you simply say it record and give a it's just like in case of class we have given a name called person since i have already i'll just say a new person person one and here i need to type all those properties which should not be modified once the object is created so i'll simply say a string i want name to should not be changed and i'll just create it this way and whatever normal the way we have created like here you just simply say the way you used to create i'll just simply copy paste from here so see this uh, close to uh, like a five to ten lines it's just converted into just two lines you can see all right so the create how to create an object uh, of record type it's pretty much same just uh, you need to say so i'll just say it's p2 and instead of saying person i will say person one you can see it's of record type i'll just go back and here it's instead of declaring or assigning those values it has to be in the parameter now the name actually so i will say abc which i don't want user should be allowed to modify after the object is created all right so let me remove this now you can see and uh, let me open this one if i say p2 dot name it should give me a compiled error you can see here over here it's it's showing the same error what we were getting in case of a normal class having the property of any type in a subset all right so let me comment this one and let's see what is printing you can see it's printing the same and one more thing did you observe here in record if i go back to the class that i mean if i go back to the record uh, code i didn't mention anything uh, sort of like two string method it's by default you know implementing that i am ju i just created an object of the person one which is of a record type and i am simply saying print p2 internally it's all uh, you know taking care of the two, two string things also that is why i was uh, like adding two string in the normal class so if i in record it's not required it is having other things also which i'll show you in just a bit all right the second thing is with record you get two more new things which is like let's say you want to you know copy this object i would say clone the object what you do simply you can say where p3 this time i'll take it and i want to clone this p2 so i will say with simply empty set i'll tell you why i'm just keeping this empty set that me the meaning of this line means create or a clone p2 type object as it is don't do any or don't modify anything now if i cop uh, print this p3 you can see it it's copied and created a new object all right now let's say uh, you want to clone it but still you want to make some small modification while creating itself so what you can do simply uh, you can type something let's say here you have all the things available so let's say you want to change the name or i'll just say this time i'll say x y z earlier is a b one a b e c all right x y z and uh, for will i want to set it to say one 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 run it so it's actually copied since we don't have anything extra in the previous object it's just two properties so that's why but it's actually it's cloning the previous object and modifying the name and the mobile number all right now one more thing i want to show is the by default it's doing the two string as well as it's doing the equals of uh, method also so let me show you how it's going to be so for that let me you know create a new object let's say or i would i would say i'll just clone it so i'll just create p4 
and I want to clone it so I'll say clone it from p3 with don't want to modify anything and simply say console dot I would say p4 equals equals to p3 let's see what it's going to print you can see it's printing p uh, is true because the object of this one i'll just print that also p4 so that it will be clear the last two lines is p3 and p4 okay you can see these three uh, see, objects content is same that is why it's saying true because it's doing internally implemented in implementing or you know, you know doing the same equals now when when we do how many ways to create the object uh, one dot name is equal to equal to object two dot name it's internally doing those things all right but actually the reference of p4 and p3 is different because we actually cloned it right how we can check that we can simply say console dot front line I will say reference equals p4 p3 okay so as you can see it's printing false and I'm using a, a equal operator you can use a, you know equal method as well simply say equals p4 comma p3 both are pretty much same you can see true true and false is for reference all right so next thing is we we can use inheritance concept also in the record so let's do that so since i have created a, a record of person let me create a new one and then one there is one catch over here you can uh, inherit this uh, record from another rec uh, record type not class i mean like you can't do like a cross all right so let me create a new record of uh, i will say student here i am saying student let's say uh, i will say label and i just want to you know run it the person class so for example if i say simply p person one which is of a record type actually now person one requires name which is a mandatory property actually so i need to say the way we used to do in the normal class like you look passing dot base something like that so we have to do it over here so simply say name and i will say name over here all right so now if you create a new object let's say p5 or i would say student this time here i need to you know type the name and the label so i will say something like uh, um, give a name called abc and uh, here it will show you all the number okay it's showing two names because the name uh, you know it's different so what I could do make it simply have the similar name all right so if I go back now it's not sure okay okay let's print this a student object you can see it's printing name class and the label all right that's pretty much about this video thank you very much